Wasteland. And special shout outs to Abraham Street, Simo, Dan Kane, Tuckerton 296, Dave Rudd, John Smith, Fenland Nerfworks, Shadowland 1999, Legio Astorum Princeps Michael. A special shout out to Black Jake's Revenge as well. He's making a damn good collection of vehicles and I love the level of detail he achieves in his work. So welcome to part three of the race rig build. So what have I done since the last video? Well I've added these primary exhausts from the front of the cab to the rear. Now I've had people in the past ask me well how do you do that? How do you make a long straight piece of plastic? How do you make that bend and fit? And the truth is you just bend it. You know you put your fingers on one end and you twist it's not the hardest. I think people tend to either be a bit too ginger with it, they tend to not apply as much pressure as they could, or they tend to go overboard and then they just snap it. Now I knew one of the things I wanted was for the doors on the cab to still open, because at the end of the day that's a play feature. I've got the steps leading up to it. If I was gonna have the doors glued shut, they'd, they'd be glued shut by now. So as I'm measuring the plastic out against it, I'm looking at where it can go, naturally where it can bend, and if there are any points that I can rest it on to help twist. So looking at heads uh, when the exhausts are now on, it's simple enough either side. You basically do the same thing again. <laughs> you bend it, stick it in, follow it along, twist up, and there you go. I might do a video at some point on all the thousands of different ways you can do exhausts, but to be honest, it's up to you and your imagination. I mean, there's no right or wrong way of doing exhausts. Now, one of the questions is, what kind of ram are we putting on this wall rig? I could go for like a snowplow bulldozer type look, similar to what I've done on my Wolverine build, but I decided I wanted something a bit more traditional, something a bit more wasteland utilitarian, so a nice curved ram that can just scoop cars out of the way. So taking a piece of offcut, we're cutting it to size and we're cutting it just so that the edges are all relatively straight. I think one of the things when it comes to any wasteland build is you don't need to worry too much about measuring the stuff just cut it, just bend it, just do it. You know, if it works, great. If it doesn't, you can do it again and nothing gets thrown away and everything gets reused. So there's no need to worry about this. You, know, you could spend hours, you could spend days of your life trying to find the right tool to make that one perfect curve. Or you could just spend two minutes and just squeeze it and bend it. And oh look, you got a ram because it's the right shape and it's the right width and it's the right height. The only thing that's different is you didn't go out and spend like a hundred dollars on something that you didn't need. Okay so once we've got the rough shape we need to adjust it, we need to make some changes. In this case I, case, I find it's just a little too tall. Um, you can also have an experiment as well. You can see if you want it curving towards the left or the right. You know, it's sort of a, an angle to really bounce cars out of the way to one side or the other. What I've decided to do is cut it just a little shorter on the top, but you could also angle it, you could add spikes and things, you know, there's all sorts you can do with a ram. Just quickly showing how I've attached it, um, I have went for the ram kind of facing downwards. I made it so that you could still see the Jaguar on the bumper there, because I think that's pretty neat. And it really is just two pieces of plastic card tubing just cut and then it's glued to. So let's look at doing the sides of the trailer. Uh, I've taken some offcuts and I've just cut these to a variety of different lengths. There's no need to really be particularly neat. You can use any thickness, any any kind of damaged or textured plastic card. I think this is probably the easiest part of the build 
but at the same time it can be one of the hardest because this really defines the look of the vehicle like how you armor your vehicle up you know are the plates uniform are they all welded together does it look like more of a corporate build or is it something that really is pieced out of bits of refrigerators and and oven doors and whatever the hell they've got to hand one of the nice things you can do is you can angle the plates when you're gluing them on you can twist them you can bend them you can drill holes in them you can attack them with your craft knife you can get all these different shapes that that really sort of evoke the wasteland now I like to leave some of this stuff in when I'm recording um, just so you can see the <laughs> you, you could call it the creative process if anything it's just trial and error of finding where something looks best but when we're done it's just gluing onto the running boards and sticking it in place at the end of the day there's no right or wrong answer with a lot of this stuff what works for me might not work for you and vice versa you might be getting all the way up to this point and be thinking ah oh, what the hell is he doing he's ruining ruining his war rig well the best thing is when you make your war rig you can do it to your own preferences. What works for one guy doesn't work for another, but it might also work for ten other guys. So. I like to vary the textures when I am putting things down. You know, I like some of the plates to be thinner, some of them to be thicker, some of them to be bending outwards like they've, you know, they're more improvised, whereas some of them are a bit more, some of them are a bit jagged. It's got a bit of an armoured skirt look to it. Now I'm just speeding this up, the actual cutting and gluing part here. Um, it's pretty much as you imagine. You know, I'm just cutting plates off, sticking them on. You know, nice, e easy, simple stuff. But it's it's necessary. It's important. But again, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you guys for continuing to support and watch my videos. Um, it's pretty crazy when you think about the amount of people that have been jumping on and subscribing and and liking and commenting on my stuff even though I've got this is what my ninth upload if that it's uh, pretty pretty insane but at the end of the day I'm gonna keep on doing it. I'm gonna keep on pushing the envelope and I'm gonna keep on making these videos because I enjoy them so if you enjoy them that's a plus <laughs> Okay, so here we've got a plastic cross-stitch sheet. It's a larger, heavier grade than what we've been using before, which is the, the sort of the finer circular type stuff. It's all available available from your local sort of hobby and craft stores. Um, any, any art supply stores will have these. Um, you just need to have a good look around. And when you do find them, just you know stick them in your materials bin and just keep a hold of them you know there's no need to throw away any of this stuff because one day you'll find a use for it so again playing around seeing I could put it on the top like some sort of improvised fence or maybe I could have it along the side here which is what I've opted to do and the nice thing is you can angle it so the bottoms are the bottom of the grid is running flat against the base whereas the tops are just poking up and out so almost like a little bit of sort of defense like spikes or something and here we've got the traditional aluminum wire mesh this is available at any car supply store so the same place you go to buy windscreen wiper blade replacements not petrol stations I don't believe petrol stations do this stuff but any place that you can go to buy, you know, <laughs> car stuff, you know, tools or, like I say, windscreen wiper blades or de-icer, you know, any of that shit, you can find this stuff there. So for the thousandth time, where do you get your aluminum mesh? Car supply stores. In the UK, Halfords. Halfords sell, sell this stuff. Aluminum car repair mesh. So it's, a, it's the same again on the other side and after adding a couple of long plastic spikes out at using plastic tube, let's look at adding some barbed wire. 
Now I'm just going to show you the basics of how to make this stuff. Um, there are more advanced things you can do with making barbed wire, but this is the simplest out of the bag trick you can do. Simply find your end and get a pen or a pencil. This stuff is, it will untangle on you, so try not to worry about it. And then it's the simplest trick in the world. You just wrap that around your pen or pencil. In this case, I'm actually using an old piece of plastic pipe. And then you get this wonderful curled spiral that you can then just add straight on the side. Okay, thank you guys, and I will see you all on the next Wasteland video.